Hello, N4H and H here. This is going to be a follow-up video. Uh, consider it maybe a part two to the video that I posted recently regarding the TimeWave DSP59 Plus, the audio frequency DSP unit you see sitting right here atop the Yaesu FTDX10. So in the previous video, I featured the uh, DSP59 Plus with my vintage Yaesu FT890 from 1991 and I showed how effective audio uh, level DSP could be with those vintage rigs to really breathe new life into that uh, an older rig and you could you know certainly uh, continue to use an older rig and yet enjoy some DSP and I think I uh, hopefully showed you that audio frequency DSP is not necessarily uh, inferior it can be quite good and especially good uh, for example, I pointed out that the auto notch right here, this button here on this DSP unit um, at audio frequencies is superior to any of the IF notch filters that I've encountered as far as the IF auto notch filters, commonly called DNF in a Yaesu radio. And, uh, and remember in the previous video, I featured the what I call the APF. It's their version of audio peak filter. Uh, as well. So you can go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it to watch this unit in action with a vintage rig giving that vintage rig um, you know some some advantages that it didn't otherwise have when it was introduced. So now I've got it sitting atop the Yaesu FTDX10 and it is in in the loop with the FTDX10 so the uh, external speaker jack is going out and into the time wave dsp 59 plus and then out of the time wave into the sp30 i'll pan over there see the sp30 which is the matching external speaker for the ftdx 10 improves the received sound quality somewhat and makes it look more like a base station okay so uh let's let's get into this um there's there was a gentleman here on 20 meters a while ago working a bunch of stations, so I'm going to see if I can take advantage of that opportunity to uh, compare audio frequency DSP to intermediate frequency DSP, which is what you have in these modern radios. So I'm going to switch over to the antenna. And there he is. Okay, I'm going to turn off digital noise reduction. Okay, now I've put the time wave unit in bypass mode, so it's not factoring in. I'm going to also press in here on the shift knob to put the FTDX10 back to factory defaults here, or well, defaults, which is... 3 kilohertz bandwidth for uh, sideband and shift at zero. Okay. I'm going to narrow it to 2400 hertz bandwidth. I can barely hear that other station. I'm going to turn digital noise reduction back on. I have it at the magic number 9, <laughs> which is Interestingly enough, that is the magic number for the Yaesu FT891, the 991, and the 991A. Anything less than 9 on the uh, on those older radios, and you get that watery digital artifact in there. Now, the 10 doesn't do that. Watch. Even at these lower algorithms, that's what they are, they're algorithms. More aggressive with a higher level. Less down, aggressive with a lower level. Because it must be a lot colder up there for the snowflakes. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit of static. Uh, so the, the more the aggressive you run digital noise snow. reduction, the uh, more normally, uh, high frequencies is what you rain, begin to lose, but you also uh, uh, knock more noise down. With the and so if it's a situation where you can barely hear somebody, by all means running at a higher level. QSB on my signal over there, do you? Delta 
There we go. Seven is working here. And again, bandwidth at 2400 digitally with a three kilohertz roofing filter. So that's physical bandwidth. And then digitally, I've narrowed to 2400. Okay, I'm going to disengage all of this. And now we're using the time wave unit. Ciao, ciao. There's no digital noise reduction yet. I'll enable it. Not bad. Digital noise reduction at the AF stage. This is K2TRD. We're going QRT now. Oh, no, he's going QRT. God bless. Have a good night. It's time for me to go outside and cook dinner in the cold weather there. Got a barbecue. 73s, everybody. God bless. K2TRD. Now QRT. Okay, we'll find another station here in a second, but hopefully you got enough of that. Um, I'm running at 2.4 kilohertz. Remember, with this unit, you control the lows here and the highs here. It's not one knob that, that does width like, well, watch here on the screen with the, see, that's, pull, when you control the width digitally on a lot of this, uh, the DSP and these newer radios, you're pulling away from the highs and the lows at the same time, which is fine if you're, if you're wrestling QR Mary, narrow it, and then use your shift you know, because if the QR Mary is producing a high pitch metallic sound, you go negative shift. If it's a lower honky sound, you go positive shift. And again, long press. There we go. And we're back to the default, which I do not listen at 3K wide. I generally go down to, there's a sweet spot with this rig that I really like, which is 2250. Okay, let's see if we can find someone else. Looking on the scope there, I see some... Signals up to bed. Uh, we'll increase the sensitivity of the 3D scope there. That's great. Look how weak that signal is. Okay. Disabled the noise reduction in the time wave. So we are right now using the time wave, except I do have the bandwidth narrowed down on the radio. You see, you you introduce a lot of noise unnecessarily when you're listening wide. So I'm going to narrow this one down to there's a 2.1k. So I've got the radio at 2250. I'll go ahead and drop it to 2.1, 2100. Okay, bypass. What part of California, over? Digital noise reduction from the radio. Okay, clearly that is the best digital noise reduction in the business, but it's got the advantage that it's taking place in the IF stage. But. There's digital noise reduction in the time wave, but not bad. Now, what you can do is if you turn on the digital noise reduction in the time wave, you can go ahead and increase your bandwidth a little bit to restore a little more luster to the audio. So I've got 2.4K on the radio, 2.4K on the time wave. Now, honestly, I could, I could put the radio back at default. The time wave's handling it now. Okay, when he comes back, I'm going to disable noise reduction. I got 
And I'll bypass. All right, and I'll go back to 2400 on the radio so it matches the time wave. Thank you very much for that. Let's see what the Charlie And noise reduction from the radio. Now, of course, I'm helping my noise reduction algorithms by running IPO. There's no reason to use AMP1 and drag in all that noise when he's a stronger signal than the noise. And remember, like I've shown you in previous videos, always use IPO first. Only use attenuation if necessary after you've turned on IPO because remember, IPO uh, improves, yeah, for simplicity, we'll call it the selectivity of the receiver. Okay, now, turning this off, back to default, and back to the time wave. While he's not talking, I'm going to mention that with the time wave unit, okay, there's noise reduction enabled. I take the left knob all the way down to the bottom, and I'll hear a tone. And now I use the right knob to adjust how aggressive I want the time wave to be at digital noise reduction. So you'll hear a little more noise here. Let me turn it up. And more aggressive, the noise is minimized. Granted, you will also lose a little bit of fidelity, but if it's the difference of being able to pull out a rare DX station or not, you know, Fidelity is not your most important goal. I find that I'm I'm pretty pleased with it at the minimum setting here. Sometimes I may run it up a couple of clicks. I'll go ahead and leave it there. And now as soon as I turn the left knob back to um, frequency, I'm back to the low and high cut for the DSP. So we'll go back up to... Uh, there's 2.4. If I'm gonna run the digital noise reduction, 2.4 will give me a little bit more of the highs that I'm losing from the digital noise reduction. If I'm not going to run the digital noise reduction, narrow it. I wanna show you CW now. So how well can this DSP-59 Plus compete with the FTDX-10's DSP for CW? So let's find some CW here. I'm going to bypass. Turn off digital noise reduction. zero in. Oh, he's centered up on 052. Now, remember, I don't want this to go into the red, so I'm going to lower the volume on the radio. Okay, so I've got really zero S units on him, but he sounds fine. Turning on digital noise reduction. Turning it down to less aggressive, putting it on 10. So that, remember, the digital noise reduction is helping fight against the ripple, the ringing sound I get from the tight filter. Because I've got the filter at 50 hertz. You 
you know, if you can, if you can hear them fine at 150 or 200, that's great. If you're in crowded band conditions, you know, you may have to run it down to 50. Okay. And I've got audio peak filter engaged as well. Now let's undo all this. Okay, and now we'll see how well the DSP-59 Plus can do it. So I'm putting, putting it into APF mode. They don't call it that, but that's what it is. I'll leave the digital noise reduction enabled. And I'm going to, now this knob is, what frequency do I want to listen for? Well, my, my side tone is 600 hertz. So I'm going to listen for 600 hertz. And narrowing the bandwidth here. That's 25, 50, 100, 150. Okay, so on the DSP-59+, Plus, it seems to be that the what's set for 600 there might be 50 hertz off. I don't know who's right, FTDX10 or Timeway, but that is an older unit there. That's... Basically, that's a 30-year-old device up there. Okay, but here he is. I've got him. Okay, going down to 50 hertz. Okay, there's a little more filter ripple in there, but let me show you what I can do. I've got noise reduction enabled, but on the time wave, I, I went less aggressive. So now... I'm going to increase it to maximum aggression. Oh, that's another station. There we go. Okay, while he's sending, I'm going to bypass. Now we're using FTDX10. <laughs> I mean, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Audio frequency DSP. It's putting in a pretty good uh, competition with that IF DSP. And like I said in the previous video, this means you could you could purchase a vintage radio and have fun with it and still have DSP. And let me tell you another thing. Those of you who have an FTDX10 who have also discovered this, that the DNF right here, the auto notch, introduces distortion into the receive audio, and it does. Hopefully, Yesu will fix it. I don't know. It's being done in DSP. Sometimes things that are done in DSP are not as good as the old way with discrete components. Um, and for example, a digital noise filter in this case is one. Another is noise blanker. The analog noise blankers were better. I talked about that in the previous uh, video when I was featuring the DSP 59 Plus. Just look for that video uh, that is entitled Hello Old Friend. And you can watch uh, this unit in action with my vintage FT-890. So, so let's go back to Sideman. And now I'll put this back in Sideman mode. I can leave digital noise reduction on if I want. Now remember right now I've got it on maximum aggression. And that's all I have to do to put it on minimum. Listening at 2.1K now. On the high end, low end is at 300. That's 200, 300, 400. And you know, I've taught this before. You want to get rid of noise? Don't listen so wide.
And with this unit, you can control the highs and lows independently. Now, if you're wondering, you can, you can accomplish a similar thing with, let me bypass. When you narrow here, then you use the shift. So you can emphasize lows or emphasize highs. So th that's the equivalent of, or similar to what we're doing here where we can separately control lows and highs. But you can simulate that by just moving the shift after you've, um, after you've narrowed the bandwidth. Okay, so here we are, radio alone. Let's find somebody. Having a problem with that uh, with that linear, so maybe it is come creep back in there. Uh, KP2MK, WDJR, you find out what's going on over? Okay, now, no digital noise reduction, listening at 2.1K. Uh, WDJR, this is KP2MP. I think uh, I'm laying up for the last year and a half some of those uh, plugs. I have to take them out and plug them back in. I think oxide developed uh, on it, and they probably okay, wouldn't make any proper contact. Now it's bypassed. Listening to the radio alone. Where at? Uh, on the antenna over. Uh, microphone and, and the, going back uh, to the sweet the spot. EQ and all that stuff that's plugged in, and uh, also uh, digital noise reduction. Uh, my cord is. From the now he's strong enough, I don't really need it to run aggressive. I'll turn it down to three. Maybe even one. Yeah, you were coming in about five nine that time. Take a smudge hammer over. Do what? Take a smudge hammer two of them over. Okay, and back to the DSP 59 plus. Let me uh, put on my earphones. All right, then. Then you, uh, you, then you will understand what I said. That, uh, and engaging said, digital noise reduction. Morning, but uh, I didn't break the string because I was sitting there. Anyway, I talked to old Joe all over. Oh, you were over there trying to tear up stockings, I know. You were over there trying to tear up stockings, over. So it's not bad. I mean, that's 30-year-old technology trying to compete with current technology, and it's doing it at audio frequency level, which means this thing can be used with any radio. So I think it's doing quite well, I mean, especially on CW, but it's not bad here, but nothing's going to beat the digital noise reduction in the FTDX-10. The Clint said he got a phone call. Now there's 2100, oh, so that's that, equal that, to what it's doing up here. <laughs> All right. All right. Did you, uh, have you uh, put that uh, radio, new radio in line yet, old? No. No, sir. I still have the old one. <laughs> you know what it is, going back there and messing with all those people and everything else. And uh, uh, I'll get to it on the first day, go ahead. So that's all FTDX-10 uh, now. You know how, how, how he been procrastinating by getting that antenna up over. Hey. Back to the time wave. Sorry. Hey, John. You were next in line. We used to get on Brother Cliff's team about his system. And now for the last... Digital noise now. reduction. So again, with this unit, if you're going to run digital noise reduction, you probably need to increase your highs a little bit, 
So I used this rig with my Yaesu FT-890 when it was my base station, and then later with my Yaesu FT-920 when it was my base station. And the 920 had some early version DSP that Yaesu had introduced, but it was also audio DSP, and this unit actually uh, had an edge over it. But the 920's DSP was not bad, especially for CW. Okay, bypass. Time wave. Now, when that weaker station comes back, I'll switch back to the FTDX 10 one more time. Okay, this is a little bit not fair because I'm not running the digital noise reduction up at an equivalent level with the uh, time wave. So here we go. Time wave. Yeah, hold on. I think K4. I mean, wouldn't you agree that's not bad for audio level digital signal processing with a 30 year old unit? Bypass. Back to FTDX 10. So 2,400 here, 2,400 here. There must be somebody else talking that's not within my skip range here, my propagation. Okay, Robert, real fine. Yeah, we worked before, we worked before. The name is John, Juliet Oscar, Henry November. I'm located oh, in the state sorry. of Texas near the city of Dallas, and you are 5555. Over. Time wave now. And again, here's without digital noise reduction with digital noise reduction. And remember, I have the digital noise reduction set at minimum by turning the left knob till you hear a tone and then, All right, then. turn Send that knob off. to its minimum. Nice oh, I didn't have it at minimum. I'm gonna go and, one uh, notch above minimum. Robbie I believe that's where I was. Uh, Robert, uh, K4 GBH, uh, told me to tell you hello though. Try about five. Since I've got this on less aggressive. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you 
let's get y'all straight now out there. He's uh, had a lot of experience. He's got one, and uh, I think he had some problem with it, and he had to send it back. There's some defaults that it goes into that only a technician can uh, reset it, though. So listen for the weaker station. To my ear, on the weaker station, the um, the digital noise reduction in the FTDX 10 wins, no, but I, not no, bad. You can't, uh, you can't tell those guys uh, their hands, this definitely. DSP 59 plus. Said, about, uh, okay, so uh, I hope uh, someone found this video helpful and informative. Uh, again, I just want to encourage you th that, I mean, here we have 30 year old technology competing against what's built into a current radio. So, again, if you find a good deal on a vintage radio with lots of knobs, if you prefer knobs like I prefer knobs, I mean, you see sitting here the FTDX 5000 MP, um, but older radios even. FTDX 1000 is a great radio, um, but then, uh, you know, there's some radios even older than that. Um, even, you know, there's some older icoms in fact i've got an icom ic725 i might shoot a future video using this unit with the icom ic725 um but you know older kenwood radios as well let's say for example you find a good deal on a kenwood ts430 or 440 um well uh then you know you could get a unit like this if you can find one on ebay or or some uh, at a ham fest or what have you and couple that to that older radio, and um, you know it's going to compete. It'll do a great job for you. Okay, so again, I hope uh, you found this video helpful and informative. Thank you again to my Patreons for helping keep this channel going. And uh, don't forget that I will be giving away the ZS6 BKW antenna that I featured a few videos ago in the unboxing uh, video uh, at some point in the future, but only to one of the Patreon supporters of the channel. Uh, as a thank you for your continued okay. support. So thanks so much uh, to the Patreons who help me justify uh, doing this. And so if you want to partner with me and, and help uh, with a monthly donation to keep this channel going, if you like this type of content, please go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And uh, you can help out with a small donation each month, um, any amount really. But, you know, there are three levels there, uh, $5, which is an associate, $10, which is an executive level, and VIP, which is the, t the top level. And the executives and VIPs have special perks available to them. For example, I've just recently uploaded... Um, well, two of the two items up there that you might find very interesting are a glossary of amateur radio terminology. It even gets into the cue signals. It gets into a lot of the common uh, terms, as well as what the various knobs on a uh, modern HF radio do, knobs and buttons. There's another document I just uploaded, which pertains to the FT-991A, and I will probably be uh, uploading one later for FT-891 and FT-DX-5000MP. It's a document that goes into all of my favorite menu settings in those rigs. So right now, the one that's up there is for the FT-991A. Some of those menu settings do apply to other radios as well, though. All right. Um, so, hey, thanks again for watching. And uh, if you would, please like the video. That helps us out with YouTube. And, of course, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe please click the bell so you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Again, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4H&H.